Hey guys, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. I have been requested here and there on how I go about writing MIDI drums, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you in this video today. If you want to join my Discord server, the link is in the description. There is a suggestion box there, or you can just leave it in the comments. Anyway, let's just get right into it. So I removed the drum track entirely for this first part of the song, and just without drums, it sounds like this. So first things first, I like to get the kick and snare pattern. So uh, I'll just do a kick for every hit of the guitar, or I guess chug. And I'll just kind of go through it like that, and it does take quite a while. All right, so I definitely didn't copy and paste the kick pattern from that I had written before, but it doesn't matter. The principle is the same. So now that we have the kick pattern that we like, I, I like to personally do it just honestly one-to-one -one with the guitar chugs. It can be really cool to do syncopation or just some notes that aren't with the guitar that are or whatever it's called, where basically the guitar is doing its thing, the, the kick drum isn't really following one-to-one, -one, and I'll show that here in a minute. With every kick hit being with the guitar, it sounds like this. And you can see that there was some notes that I was doing with the guitar here that aren't following the kick and that is somewhere I wanted the snare to be instead. So to get snare placements, I like to just kind of listen to the whole thing, and then when I feel a snare should hit, I throw a, I throw a snare in there, so. Right there. There. Right there. and right there. And then what you can do is just throw on some symbols. So I love China symbols, so I'll just throw on two Chinas for the first hit because I want it to really have that stereo wideness. And then I will do, say, every other bar. Like that. And you can see that while it, it it just feels really too slow, so I will just paste in a s second hit between those. All right, and if you want to go even further than that, what you can do is actually put another hit between those. So like that, and then you'll see that it does while you can't really hear that second hit you definitely feel that second hit in between those so and immediately that just feels a lot better and say i don't want just that one china symbol maybe i want more spice in it how i would go about that is again listen to the full song as it's going and just kind of listen for little like i like to call it ear candy there's like specific spots and songs that you listen to i'm sure you've done it where you're listening to a mix from someone else or a song that someone else wrote and you're just kind of wanting that little extra bit you're probably wishing it was there kind of step back from the song that you're writing and just listen to it as you would a listener rather than the maker and it really does help with that mindset of oh, i really wish that would have been different so for example like right here instead of doing straight china the whole time let me listen so instead of this china being here maybe a i don't know left crash and the reason I'm saying left crash is because I have a lot of symbols going on on the right side. So having something on the left side, it will really help it stand out more and not blend in together too much. So. And 
And as you can see, it did kind of take away the overall volume, so I'll put another, I'll put it back. And then maybe the China here, left China. And then say I'm like right here with the faster notes, I want a bell, so I'll do a bell. Take away that one for realism. Maybe a splash, right splash, left splash. And then I'm hearing another thing here, so a left crash. So it'll go from a left crash to a China to, say, a left splash. And so the full result. Just like that. Another thing to keep in mind when programming drums is ghost notes. While sometimes they're really subtle, sometimes you can't really hear too much of what they're doing, they definitely really do add a lot of feel into the drum parts that you write and just the sections of your song. So for example, if I wanted to add ghost notes, I would just kind of listen. Uh, again, I would pull this down quite a bit. Maybe around there. I'll add two there. One there, maybe two there, maybe just one, two there, two there, maybe one there, And as you can see, that's really coming together really nicely. And while they are quite quiet, and I would personally like them a little quieter, like this. It is giving that extra feel to the part. And while I can throw the original drums back in, and you can see what I was doing there, which look pretty similar, but I wasn't doing the crazy symbol stuff. I was doing a lot more ghost notes. I'll play this solo. And so that immediately, like, compared to if I just had a snare hit, for example, having those extra little flare or like the, like I said, the ear candy little uh, ghost notes, it really adds a lot of movement to the take. Or I guess not the take, but the, <laughs> the MIDI. And if you want to humanize this even further, what you can do, for example, these two hits, they're close, really close to each other. So naturally, if you think of a drummer playing this, you would have the first hit be a little softer, because typically they would probably play this realistically with one foot. So pull that down. And then for the double kick pattern, maybe the first hit's stronger, but the maybe the first two kick hits are stronger because you're using both feet, but then but then the last two hits, you know, they're naturally gonna be a little bit softer probably. So rather than it being a full 127 the whole time. Maybe this one can be a little harder because, you know, left foot took over, right foot has a little bit more time to compensate. But personally, I really like the sound of full 127, but that is all subjective. This isn't really a humanizing tutorial, but I just wanted to touch on that because I know that matters a lot to some people. Another thing I like to do when I do drum parts is focus a lot on toms. Toms can help either add groove, add movement, add impact, and honestly, what I like to use them for is transitioning smoothly between parts. So for example, if I were to take these away, it would just transition like this. Which obviously is kind of, I mean, it's cool, 
but not as cool as realistically having those toms. And so you can see the impact. I use these for the impact to go along with the guitar. And then these tom hits, they're more just feel to go into the next part, which is just going to be a little bit more of a silence. Rather than having them just immediately cut off, I kind of had the drums feel like they were falling into the pause. Another example that I can use for having the toms lead into a transition is this part. So it sounds like this. But if I were to take those away, it still transitions smooth, but it doesn't feel as exciting as if you're just plopping on some toms. And the way I would think about doing that is I don't really change the original drum MIDI much. This isn't anything different than what the part before it is. I just took away the ghost notes and say if I was going to write this from scratch, I would do a high tom maybe a higher one. And so, yeah, same with the ghost notes. I just kind of go between the kicks, the snares. Uh, you can do like a tom hit with the snare, but I like to pull it over just a little bit like that because if it's straight with the snare, doesn't sound exactly the same as and while it is subtle it does add a lot of width and it makes it a lot less mono thank you dennis does stuff on instagram and my server and youtube under maltheris because he gave me that tip and so rather than it just being like a barren no tom section immediately much better and i like what i did the first time so i'm going to go back one thing that I find really helps with actually writing drum parts in particular, even though I just showed you how I do it now, I find it really helps if you're actually kind of getting a groove in the song, even if you don't really have the guitar and bass written out yet, even if you just throw ambience on there and just write to the drums to the ambience, because I find ambience really does help kind of just envision what you want to do because you already have that that starting point, I guess you can say. And as, as silly and cringe as you might think it is, uh, actually air drumming the parts really, really helps kind of just map out in your head what you would like something to sound like. You know, it's kind of the same way as trying to find a tempo for something that you're trying to write. You're just kind of sitting there vibing, waiting for, you know, just imagining a click or cymbal hits or anything. It's the same thing. And just to show you a little bit better on what I mean, I will add in a new drum track here and say I'm feeling and say, I don't know, I'm not going to change it, but 176 BPM. If I were to write from scratch, again, I would start with two cymbal hits. So a China left, China right. Just do that much for now. Just kind of envision what I would like to hear. So I'm hearing like a kind of bouncy beat. So I'll do here, 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 there. Just random example. And what I mean by bouncy in my head, I that just basically means have kicks that are not in line with the symbols. So as you can see. The symbol hits are on all of the black lines here, and the kicks, for the most part, are not. And it sounds like this. And that sounds kind of lame to me. So what I can do is actually give it another listen. Hearing a snare there. Maybe a kick. Maybe I will change it. <laughs> Let's go to 150. And that sounds really weird. So uh, what you can do is just, I'll just pull it over. And that's already much better. From there, I'll just listen for snares. 
maybe there. And right there. And then we can also do toms and make sure when you do toms, you also delete the symbols. I'll do a rack tom, floor tom, kick, floor tom, kick, floor tom two. And then I'll end it with a kick and tom. Pull it over like that so it fills out the stereo width. And we end up with this. And then, if we really wanted to, we can also do the ghost notes. So put that in there, drag it down. Just like that, we got a somewhat okay <laughs> drum part. I know this was like a really weird tutorial for me to do, and I'm not sure how I would have done it otherwise, to be honest. But I hope it helps. I hope the mindset that I shared, the idea of behind what I'm actually trying to show you actually lands. Please let me know if it didn't. I can always try and redo this video, or if you like what you saw for any reason, let me know. I wouldn't be more, I will be happy to make more. And if you haven't seen it, I have new merch. Doll. Totally not inspired by anything. It's beneath the description. But yeah, that will be all for me today. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.